You know, in the beginning, I talked about uh, fight phases, and I said we had five phases, and now we're two days away from finishing up our second phase and looking forward to the spring game. You know, been very fortunate uh, this spring to not have too many injuries. Uh, you know, we heard about our quarterback, Ash, and uh, with his foot injury, and then uh, Jake Oliver has an uh, elbow, and then uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, we lost uh, Hume. Yeah, Hume with the knee. So we, uh, there's only two players that they're going to miss um, the spring practice along with, with Ash, with the spring game. But it, it's been great. You know, the guys have really worked. You know, we had some good days. We had some bad days. And it's always looking to improve and always looking to get better. You know, last week was a, a really a good week for us to be on a great campus like this, a great university, and have four of uh, three former presidents and the president of the United States to come and visit. And you talk about 50 years of what President Johnson did with the civil uh, acts, um, with the summit being here and him signing off on the civil acts, uh, <clears throat> it allowed us the equality we have right now and what we're able to enjoy. And, and for myself, you know, it was just great to see so many of the guys and uh, that you had a chance to grow up looking at with Andrew Young being there and then having a chance to look at Julia Bond, uh, Jim Brown, Dr. Harry Edwards, you know, even David Robinson was there and, and uh, Jesse Jackson. And then uh, just to go and hear President Obama speak and also to be at dinner with uh, President Bush and to go to lunch with uh, President Clinton. But uh, what a special moment. And, and I say this, the, the trail had been paved and, and so many guys' uh, shoulders that I stand on. And I have the opportunity I have just because of what uh, happened last week and just what happened in our past. And it's just so fortunate. But just to uh, get back to the spring game, uh, it's going to be one of the games that's going to be good on good. <clears throat> And we're just going to allow our players to just go out and play and, and just have a good time. You know, I always look at that game as, you know, you did all that hard work. You had 14 good practices, and now it's a chance to get the fans in the stadium. And I know we're going to have a good turnout. And then allow them to just go out and just not so much have fun because we want to score. We want to keep them from scoring on defense. But just make sure that offensively we're able to execute, defensively we're able to go stop people. And then just in the special teams, we're really not going to do much. We're not going to kick the ball off, but we will punt it with no rush. Punt returner, go back and field the punt. Wherever he fills it, that's where it's going to be put down. So just looking forward to it and just allow, getting, looking forward to just letting our guys just go out and have a good time. <clears throat> It'll be a uh, first offense versus first defense. So uh, d I don't know for just how long, but it, it'll get because what you want to do is, is just let it be good on good and let's let our guys just go play. Charlie, what kind of setback was this for Dave? <clears throat> and where he's coming from? What's what people are expecting of him? Well, I always, <clears throat> I always say this about that quarterback position. It's a position that a lot is expected. You know, when you play well, everybody want to praise you. And when you play bad, everyone's looking to criticize you. But uh, David Ash has really done a great job for us this spring and, and has really performed well. It's very tough because that uh, injury for him, I don't know how long he had it, but he said he's been bothering. He came in the other day. Our trainers checked him, and we were able just to find out exactly what was wrong. But you would have never known that he had the injury, just how well he's been practicing the way he's been carrying himself because he understands this, that, that a team is going to come and go as the quarterback goes, and, and he wants to be the leader. Did <clears throat> he establish himself, Charlie, as the clear number one, or how would you say? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say so much as he, that he's clear number one, but he, he's really established himself, and he's uh, you know did a great job of just learning the offense. I think it's more just the terminology and then just wanting to be a leader and just lead the team. Charlie, any conversations with Tyrone now that his, his workload is obviously going to increase? Well, I had a, I told Tyrone, I said, the, the key thing for you is it's all about confidence. And it is, it's, it's all about you just uh, doing everything we ask you to do and play within yourself. It said, now that you are the quarterback, just just take the field and, 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 and know this. This is your team, and it's up to you to go lead it. <clears throat> Well, it's it's all about, you know, every day just coming to work and, and wanting to get better each and every day where he, he's locked in and he's focused. And, and it's for a quarterback, it's all about preparation where, where they understand that, you know, it's the offense. You need to understand the offense. You need to understand the a terminology. You need to get understand the checks, you know, get us into good plays and bad plays. And with Coach Wickline and with Coach Watson just doing a, a really good job of installing it, then the quarterbacks, they, they've, been a, they've done a great job of just being able to just lock in with, with everything we ask.
ask him to do. When you tell him this is your team, you can go lead it, is that hard for a guy who hasn't established himself yet to kind of accept that he can be a leader on a team like this? Well, at some point you have to establish yourself. So when is it going to happen? And and you you never know. You know, for that position, you're always looking because you have enough people around you. So it's not solely placed on your shoulders. Because if if you look at us offensively, we we have an offensive line that is, is doing a really good job of blocking and protecting the quarterback. You have the big backs with, with Malcolm Brown being one of them, and then receivers are making plays. But yeah, he just he needs everyone, and that's what you're looking for as a team. We, we need everyone to perform. And and when you do lose a quarterback. Whomever you lose, someone else has to step up. So now it's Tyrone, uh, it's uh, Swoop's job to go step up. Do you see him as a different style of quarterback than maybe you had with Teddy? Is he more of a, a running type of guy, or can he run the same thing that Teddy did? No, he he can do both. You know, he 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 can throw the football, but he he's just got to get comfortable throwing. And he's he's big, he's strong, he's physical, and 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 he's very smart. So uh, for him, it, it, it's it's just more of him just learning the offense. Well, it's just so hard because you only have 15 practices in the spring to really say, hey, this guy's going to be the guy. we hoping to be the guy because now you have a chance to work now in the summertime to get to go uh, get to work done during the summer. Then you get to when you get to fall camp and now you start locking down saying, hey, who, who's this guy going to be? You put them in those situations where they have to go perform. Right. Did, did Hume, have he shown you anything? Yeah, you know, the thing I really like about him is, is really, you know, it was a big safety for us. And, and we play a lot of safety. Uh, we drop down our safeties in a box, and they, they're like a backer, and he's big and physical. And it's just so tough. You, you know, you never want to see anyone get an injury because he was really developing and coming along good for us. You guys scrimmaged last Saturday? Yes. How did Tyrone look in that? Oh, did a really outstanding job last Saturday. I, mean, I don't know just his numbers, but he had really good numbers. And uh, you know, threw a couple of touch, threw an unbelievable ball to uh, Marcus down the sideline, and where he had uh, beat one of our defensive backs. He laid it out there; it was a big throw. But did did a, a really good job, and he settled in. You know, he took it like had had the confidence, and and just had had a, just a different air about him, where he he did a really good job of just leading the offense. Uh, the uh, quiet period finally coming down to an end uh, after the spring game. <clears throat> Well, recruiting never ends, and, and you have to stay locked. You know, you just continue to recruit the whole time. So what what has happened is you develop those relationships right now, so now you get a chance to go out because a lot of the spring practices will be going on the, the month of May, so our coaches have a chance to get into their area and, and, and go see the young men that we have uh, very, a, a high interest in. And, and so now they can just watch them practice. And, and then, you know, I think the recruits, you know, they love seeing you walk into school. And, and not only that, we want to get into my, as many high schools in this state as we possibly can also. Charlie, also in terms of recruiting, how big is Saturday for the staff with a lot of kids being able to come in and see you guys? Well, they, a lot of them have been to practice already because we've had a lot of scrimmages. So it's good that they come down and, and just more to see the, just the, the number of fans show up and it's just more of a game day atmosphere. Are there a handful of players, Charlie, who, who you are really going to be disappointed if they don't flash the way that they have all spring? You've mentioned some of the younger guys, you know, like <coughs> Bryson Eccles and Warwick and some of these young guys. Well, they, they're going to have to compete on Saturday, so it's not like, uh, you know, they, they, they're going to be given an opportunity just like everyone else. So they, it, it's not so much I'm going to be upset because – you know, I expect them all to go out and participate and then go play well and, and have a chance to flash and, and go do what we ask of them. Charlie, you talked a couple of weeks ago about having to restart a practice to, to kind of get guys' minds. Is that something that's come up again in, you know, in the past week or two, or is that something you're still having to address with guys to, to get the mentality right? No, I, th- I think they understand. Well, once you do it one time, they, they understand. And, and it's all about whenever you get a new staff in and, and guys are still trying to just get a feel for you and, and what you expect of them, and, and you don't ever like to restart a practice. But if things aren't going the way you want them to, I, th- I think that's the way you send a message that we're, that, uh, we're just not going to come out here and show no effort. Because anytime I, lo- I look at it, and I, and I tell guys all the time, it's all about effort. It's all about your assignment where you know what you're supposed to do. And it's all about just fundamentals and technique where you – you do what we ask of you. So it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't take much talent to go hard. You can go hard every snap. You don't have to be very talented to do that. But we know what the, um, 
what you understand, you have to understand your assignment and understand when we call a defense or make, call it make an offensive play call that you know what you're doing. And then it's just the fundamentals of where, where it's, you know, the proper way of carrying a football, catching a football, getting in a football position, all those things have to come into effect when you're talking about a, up to a player and he has to, he has to understand it. Will he be back in the summer? If he does what I ask him, he has an opportunity to be back in the summer. What was the message to him from you? Well, he needed some things he needed to work on. So if he gets that done, then he will uh, be able to be back. <clears throat> Is Hume going to need surgery? Uh, Hume would need. He's already had surgery, so uh, it's uh, similar to what a perk had. So and so he's already had it, and then he's back. Uh, getting ready, starting his rehab and everything. Coach no ash. Bergeron, Gray, how depleted is this offense heading into spring game? Well, I, I don't say it's depleted because you have enough guys in place. I mean, you still have a quarterback in Swoops here, and then you have Malcolm Brown. Uh, you know, we were able to take over street and move him to, to running back. So it's, yeah, I don't think it's going to be depleted. You know, those guys are injured. So it, it's, it's always – you have guys, and you, that's why you recruit. And uh, now it's time for someone else to step up. Coach, what do you do at quarterback? Do you have that quarterback right now? Well, the the only two we have left is Miles and and uh, Trey Holtz. So it has, those are the uh, the other two. Charlie, in terms of snaps, do you have a, or you and Sean have y'all talked about a kind of a percentage you give Tyrone? Do you give him all of them? Do you need to see Miles and Trey in that environment? Or what, how, have you guys decided how y'all do that outside of that? Well, it, at some point you're gonna those other two are gonna play because it's gonna be good on good. So it's ones versus ones and twos versus twos. So they're gonna get a chance to play. You coach big. Alumni reunion weekend. Uh, what's the message to those guys? And what are you going to try to make? Well, it's, it's all about what they've done here with the program. So much tradition and pride within this program, and the foundation's been made, and they built this program. So it's always good. And you know what? The good thing about when you have those uh, alumni reunions, you know, those stories get bigger and bigger because you know one guy's going to say, you know, he did this, and another's going to say he did this. But it's it's good that you see that group always come together. Because really, that is a foundation of the program, and, and you like to be around our coaches, to be around, and get an opportunity to meet a lot of them. Are your defensive backs separating themselves? In the defensive backs, no, because you you have you know Diggs has had a really good camp. Uh, um, you know, you, you look at it with Tom, uh, Thompson having a, a really good camp, but uh, you know, with the DBs, you know, that's just a really solid, good core guys sitting there. You know, with Duke Thomas, it's just a really good core. And Josh Turner, so and they played a lot together. So you, you can see that that group can come together and gel very well. Yeah, because because even when you, you look at the young guys with a Collins coming on, with a Colbert coming on, you know, you, you have some young guys that are coming on with Eccles that that can help us. And that's and that's what you want to establish. Make sure you establish enough a depth at every position that we can get it accomplished. Charlie, you guys put out the video last week of the three on three drills. How did the guys respond to that? Well, that's the first time y'all had a chance to see that, but we've done it three on three. You know, I think it's the first day I passed, we went three on three. But uh, it's good. You know what's happening now is guys are asking for that drill because it's a uh, it's really a good drill. And the thing I like about a drill is it's so close quarters that guys don't get injured. And you have a chance to, where you know defensively you got a lot and get off of a block, and offensively you got to trust it. And that's why I put a running back in there and let him run downhill and see if we can get off blocks and, and make the tackle. Where are you, these guys? Um, how did these guys respond to the first camp under Coach Moore? And also, uh, when you were waiting on the Louisville job, why was he on your short list for the uh, for an assistant coach's job? Coach Moore? Mm -hmm. Well, you just look at his work and what he's done. And, and, and when you talk about a program and you're talking about building toughness in the program, it's going to start in the weight room. And, that, and um, when it starts in the weight room, then it just carries on to the football field. And what he's done in the weight room, you see what – and the thing he does is he also has a great relationship with the players. So it's, it's, it's about work, but they know this. It's all about – they can always go to him. And, he's, and he is the one that handles a lot of the discipline. So they, they know – and he's really fair about what he does. And the players, that's why they respect him so much. How would you assess the offensive line? Well, you look at you know you look at your, your two tackles with Kennedy and Harrison, and then the, the center position with Espinosa is an outstanding player, very smart player, and and then you, you look at uh, Taylor on one side at the guard position where you're getting a lot of work with Flowers, but we, we've been able 
to even with us losing Perk, you know, you, you've been able to continue to try to establish some depth with as a Rami still sitting there. But you know, there's, there's enough players that are sitting there where you you probably need anywhere from you know seven to eight linemen, and you can always find your guy that you can rotate around because you know even with Rollison, he's coming on at center also. So that that's a group that uh, is, is really beginning to gel together and just f form their own nucleus and their own niche and uh, really like that offensive line. Now, we just got to go out and protect the quarterback and go block some guys. Was last week the first time you met Jim Brown? And what did you take away from the conversation? No, I met Jim Brown actually in, um, in, uh, I was in Lexington, Kentucky, and, and what they have, this, the state of Kentucky has, what they bring back is all the pro athletes from the state, they come back and they have, uh, Frank Menefield does a great job of, of uh, putting this, or putting it together. And so Jim Brown actually spoke, so I had a chance to meet him then. But, uh, you know, you look at one of the all-time greatest, and, and it's, you know, what his work speaks for itself. And not only that he, you know, not his, not only his work on the field, but you look at what he's done in the community when he was one of those guys that are able to go into to the inner cities and, and try to get with the gang members and, and try to flush all the issues that was happening with the gang members. How's Ridgeway coming? Uh, Ridgeway is, is really doing well. And, uh, I, you know, the thing about Ridge, you know, you look at him on the defensive front because, you, you know, you still got Malcolm, you, you got Tank sitting in, in there. And so he, he's a swing guy that can you, – you want him to play the three technique because, you know, he's such a big, strong, physical guy that it's hard to move him because he, he is so strong. And, and once he's still – and he's still developing. And once he learn to use his hands, then he's, he's one of those guys that's strong enough to, to uh, move people out of the way. I feel like a lot of, I don't know, a lot of coaches <coughs> just treat this as kind of another practice. I mean, do you, how do you view what actually the, the two hours on Saturday? Do you view it as um, positions are up for grabs, or it is just kind of a glorified practice, or what do you tell the guys in terms of the importance? Well, they have a chance to where the fans are going to get a chance to see them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be structured almost like – it's going to be a game, but it's also going to be structured like a practice where, you know, they're going to go out and compete, and we're not just going to go out there and just go through the motions. We're, we're going to give great effort. How did President Bush get dinner and President Clinton just get lunch? How did they do that? I don't know. That's all the time I had to give them. You know, I wasn't very, I was very busy. <laughs> no, I'm the one who's very fortunate for that. But uh, no, it, it was really good to just to, to be amongst the, the crowd and be at, be at the table or just be, just be in the arena with them. You have a lot of guys who are going to be coming back from injury in summer and fall who didn't take part in the spring. Is that reassuring, knowing that it's Rod Evans? Kevin Jackson, Jordan Hanks, Jonathan Gray are still waiting. Well, what's, what's uh, you know, great to, that you have those guys coming back. Now it adds depth to you, what you're looking for, and they're really good football players. So now you have a chance. You know, some of those guys has been starters, so now they come in and they, they're able to go right to work. Uh, and I, I say this to them, you know, they've been in the pit the whole time, so they, they've really been working. So it's – and, and it's not very fun in that pit, and they couldn't work their way out of the pit. So they they've had a they've they weren't practicing, but they've had they had a, they've done a lot. Uh, I know you said recruiting is kind of year round and all, but is spring evaluation period one of the more critical times of the year, given that things are kind of winding down here with the spring game being over with, and you can go and see them in person and on the campus? Well, we already have just a. Um, an idea of who we're going to offer and what they've offered, the offers have been laid out already. So the spring evaluation is, you know, our guys get a chance to look at them, but still, you know, we're not going to take back the offer. So now we're able to go in and just go watch them practice. <clears throat> What's the area you're most concerned about? Well, I, I, you know, you, you start at the quarterback position and because um, you know this, that, that he's, he's the one that, that manages the team for you. And uh, so yeah, I always go from the quarterback position to uh, I always want to make sure we're protected up front because that's where the game starts with, you know, offensive line. And then on defensive line, can we do we have enough depth where we can get off of blocks? You know, the, the little guys don't bother me as much as the big guys, but I just want to make sure that the quarterback position and the offensive and defensive line is, is really strong enough and where we can, um, you know, with those guys, it is. It's about protecting that quarterback and, and getting to the quarterback. I know you don't know for sure, but is it possible that a quarterback who doesn't start practice till August could start in August and September a game? 
they said again now. Is it possible that a quarterback who doesn't show up and start practicing until August could start the start of the season? But I don't know. I don't know who that would be. <laughs> I mean, you got somebody coming in for me? <laughs> oh, I'm asking. I mean, you got a, you got a secret guy coming in for me. I don't, <laughs> you know, we signed one in Gerard, and he's the only one. So, uh, but it, but you know, but but would Gerard have a chance to compete for starting though? Yeah, I mean, he's going to have a chance because he, he's going to be out there. But it, the thing is that if uh, the, the thing the guys that are here now they know the system. So now Gerard's got to come in and learn the system, and he'll be here in June when when. The, Summer camp starts. I mean, summer school starts. Can you send him a playbook? Can we send him a playbook? Yes, at the, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, we can send him a workout book. But they'll be here in June, so he'll be here in another month. Can, can he come to the game? He'll be at the game Saturday. Yes, all our recruits, all our recruits will be here on Saturday. The linebacker position, Charlie, the in the middle, is it just open, or has someone separated a little bit at the middle linebacker? Well, you, you have Edmonds uh, inside right now with Tim Cole, and then uh, you have Jink outside at uh, the soundbacker. And but but you, you still have a, enough bodies in there where um, you know guys are going to get a, an opportunity to work, and and uh, it, you know it's that's a position that uh, you know we'd like to have signed more. But I think we only signed one linebacker, but it, that is a critical position for us. What do you like about Cole? Well, you know, the, the thing about Cole is, um, you know, we cover up that position because he's not a very big player. So you'd like to cover him up and let him run and, and use his athletic ability. Charlie, how has Steve Edmund done this spring? I mean, he's coming back from what sounded like a pretty, pretty gruesome injury to, to end his career. How has he done this spring? Steve, uh, you know, the thing about him is he, he just works and uh, he's always works, just works hard and, uh, that, 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 you know, and can provide the leadership. There's a guy that, he he doesn't say a lot. He just let his work speak for itself. Uh, I I say this. I can remember we were going through winter conditioning, and and I used to say, God Almighty, is he gonna make it? Because he just. But then somebody kept saying, You just wait till he play. Wait, watch him play, coach. And he does. It's like when we scrimmage, he he probably try. Well, he tries to make every tackle, but he's done a really good job. Have you seen anything from from back the freshman? Uh, it's still learning, and, and you know, it, it, sometimes it moves a lot, uh, you know, moves too fast for back. But you know, Santos is one that is is really doing an outstanding job, also. But the the, the thing about a young guy is when when you you know they come in, and and he, which is great for back that he gets a you know semester up on the rest of the guys. But it, it's all a learning process, and just how quickly they can uh, absorb the information. Where do you think the team's strong? Uh, if I say this team, just looking at it, just the strength of our team, it could be our, with our, our offensive line. Once we get Perkins back, you know, you have a chance to be really strong there. The running back position, because you know Malcolm's done a great job. Now, when you're getting a Gray back and Bergeron back, you know, there's three big backs there with Overstreet. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the skill position with wide receiver and DB, you have enough guys there. You know, it's, it's not like you have a, you know, a guy that head and shoulders above everyone, but you have a, a good nucleus and a, and a really good group of guys. Charlie, your, uh, your place kicker and your punter, if you had to go play an actual game tomorrow, do you have guys that you feel you could run out of those two spots that would, would be successful? Well, we're still, uh, you know, like every scrimmage, I try to, you know, get the kickers out there and, and let them kick. And, uh, and then let the punter, you know, Will Russ does a great job of banging the ball and then with Rose with the field goal kick. But it's, it's still, we, we still have camp left. I mean, where we can get it to the summer. But uh, they, they're doing a good job of battling. The corners right now, who would uh, be the first ones to walk out? If we were to walk out on uh, to go play a game, it would probably be Duke and um, uh, Six walk out.